All right, y'all. So it's AGP here. It's now Wednesday. You know, October 9th. Random, you know, but you know, it is what it is. We've gotten some new info on Death Stranding in the last couple of days. We also got some new info on the PS5. Um, so I want to talk about kind of all that in this video. This, you know, as you can see, this video is not very long, but you know, it's just a few things I just wanted to talk about because we got a little bit more info about Sam's connection with the NPCs. Um, in Death Stranding and its effect, like the, that your actions, their effect on certain characters. We got a little bit more info on that. And we got the ESRB rating, uh, which is an M, but we kind of expected that anyways. But we'll get more in-depth into why it's that. There's a couple spoilers that I probably won't really say. It's because they're not really... They're spoilers in the sense that like they tell you like like very small like little cut things or scenes or something that happens, but I don't think I'm gonna say that in this video. Um, I'll just let you guys look it up if you look up the um, ESRB ratings, which I'll put I can put the link to that article in the description so you guys can see it. But first, I'm gonna start with the reaction to this official cinematic trailer because I actually have not watched it. And if y'all don't know, I actually really like cinematic trailers, you know? Like, my first ones with, my first experiences with cinematic trailers that made me really want a game was actually the first Assassin's Creed. I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan, but that's neither here nor there. Um, let's just get into this. Obviously, this is short, so I'm going to show it twice. It's like a minute, literally, like, of a trailer. So, I'll show it twice, and then, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, um, you know, go from there. So, let's, let's do that. I really have not watched this. I've avoided watching it for this reason. Well, void outs. They put void outs in the cinematic trailer. They'll try and stop you every step of the way. monsters. But you gotta keep moving. And it's like when we were watching the game. Sheesh, how do you even catch up? That's really some nonsense. Let's show them some bullet gun play, okay. Oh my goodness. Hurry, Sam. You know what's at stake. And the only way to save Do I know what's at stake, Blake? Is in my hands. My name is Sam Porter Bridges. It's my job to reconnect us. That's tough. Okay, well, they're showing it again. I mean, obviously, uh, <laughs> there's a whole lot going on here. Um, They'll try and stop you every step of the way. And my man is really in some. It's kind of like the cinematic trailer is kind of just gameplay that we saw, but from a cinematic uh, viewpoint. Like we've seen him running from these guys. We've seen them throw the spear and it knocking off the. Uh, Packages. We've seen him shoot bullet gun ammo in the 50 minute gameplay a couple weeks ago. So that is basically what we're watching. Hurry, Sam. You know what's at stake. But see, he said hurry. So like the thing is too, I'm sure at different points in the game you'll have to. I ho hopefully you don't have to deliver certain packages in a certain amount of time. Because that could be tough. Um, although they get into it a little bit for that new info that I'm gonna discuss with y'all. Greatness of Okay. Well, yeah, that's 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 pretty much that. <laughs> All right. Well, honestly, the cinematic trailer is dope. Um, it's only about a minute, and it pretty much sums up, you know, the things that we've seen in the gameplay in Tokyo Game Show and Gamescom. Uh, we've seen a lot of it. Like I said, it's basically like they took the gameplay that we saw and just made it cinematic. You know, but it was cool. I liked it. I liked it a lot. It looked, it looked dope. Um, you already know how excited I am for this game, so that's not really new news. But yeah, so, alright, well, I guess the first thing, you know, we'll get into, though, is this new info that we got about Death Stranding. So, apparently, you know, your, your interaction slash actions with certain NPCs will actually affect the outcome of that NPC. And yes, I do mean whether or not they live or die. Uh, we don't know how many people there are like this, but uh, Kojima was in Moscow at a museum, I believe, in Russia, and he was talking a little bit about one character, one NPC that you have this relationship with who you have to make a delivery to in the beginning of the game. Um, and then from then on, it's up to you whether or not you visit that character again. Um, the character is sick, and I assume the first thing you deliver to him 
it is a him, is medicine. Um, and apparently, like, you get to decide whether or not you're going to keep coming back to the person. You can give him medicine, other packages, and or, um, dang, what was it? Or listen to his stories. Yeah, so, so, and again, obviously, because this game is about making connections, this is a big deal in the game, especially since the outcome is really in your hands, like, like, tomorrow's in your hands, the outcome is really in your hands, um, so you, but the problem that Kojima said is that you have to make this, this hard decision, because you are moving further and further away from this person, so it's, it's safe to say that this person starts off on the east coast, like, like, where Sam and them do as they try to connect going west, which means that this person is clearly on the east coast, and you have to keep moving west, and then in those time spans, how many times do you come back to the east coast just to visit that one character, to either give him medicine, or give him another package, or listen to his stories, or all three, I'm sure you, you have the opportunity to do all three, and you know you get rewarded for doing these things, uh, as we talked about watching in the 50-minute gameplay, right? We saw how you delivered the package to the prepper, and he gave you a harmonica, um, and that was just from the first package that was delivered. It was delivered in good condition, and he appreciated it, so he gave you a harmonica. And then, obviously, Kojima said, too, that, like, if you keep revisiting those preppers and you form a stronger and stronger connection, that eventually they'll come up from the basement. And I'm sure you get special things. You know, they probably don't give you something special every time you go. But there's probably a few things where if by the time they come up from the basement, it'd be funny if, uh, metaphorically, it's just like they give you all this stuff. And then the last big, biggest thing that they give you is actually face-to-face -face contact, and that would be like another like connection, play on connection, which I think would be kind of dope. Seems like something Kojima could possibly do. So maybe you don't get something physical after that, but it might just make a connection so strong that maybe they can help you out with something later, because you know you can build bridges and things. I know there's some theories in myself too. I'm like, if you're walking across this country in this game, and you can build bridges and roads, who knows? And the, the multiplayer and single player is integrated. I mean, we could start off when the game comes out to it being desolate. And then by the time the game's been out for a year, people have actually like built. When I say people, I mean us, the gamers. Um, and we've connected with people and we've built actual cities. Can you imagine walking around Death Stranding in November? Right? And then, like, when it first comes out, and then a year later, like, you're walking around the world of Death Stranding and it's completely like different like you pretty much built a new world that'd be something crazy but anyways that character if you do happen to keep coming back you know you can keep him alive by giving him medicine and stuff but it is true that if you do stop maybe and, and it couldn't have been on purpose and you just forgot he was there we don't know how long it's gonna take before he doesn't get enough medicine before he dies but um if if you remember you can keep him alive if not you might come back and he might be dead so that's pretty crazy because it's like okay so how many characters how many npcs are like this you know in this game uh because it really focuses like maybe even some of the main characters you know the characters that we've seen so far i mean i think they're important to the story so it'll be much harder to lose one of them but you know you never really know i mean you could have a mission where you know, you lose one of them, and maybe you gotta go bring them back somehow. I don't know. There's, like, three different worlds in this. There's, like, the, the world that we're used to when you're alive. There's the world where people pass. And then there's, like, this middle ground world, which I think is the beach. Like, because the, they call those things beach things. I feel like that's the bridge. Um, but, you know, we also got a little bit of that in the uh, Hartman trailer. Because you're just like, hmm. You know? <laughs> What's really going on here? But, yeah, that's pretty tough. So, um... That's dope. Uh, now, for the ESRB ratings. Now, I said before, Death Stranding is going to be um, rated M. Uh, we expected that anyways because of all the stuff that we've seen so far. Uh, but they said that it's going to be rated M because of nudity, intense violence, um, oh, blood. And I think... Those are the, I think those are the three main things. Um, so I'll put that up on the screen. Uh, that's also in the article about the ESRB rating. Uh, but 
because of exposed buttocks is for the nudity part. You know, we've seen him butt naked. We saw the private room and we saw, um, you have even seen that trailer where he was kind of naked. So we know that was going to be in it. I'm not going to tell you the couple of things they said that happened. Well, one thing we already saw um, was in that one trailer where that guy was trying not to get caught by the BTs. But he tried to shoot himself, but the BTs grabbed his uh, leg and pulled him up, so he dropped the gun so he couldn't. So he pulled something out and started stabbing himself. It seems like that, you know, disturbing scenes like that, that is also why it's an ESRB rating. Um, again, I'm going to put the link in the description, but only read the whole thing. It gives you spoiler alerts in it too, but only read the whole thing if you really want to, if you really want to see it. You know, don't don't read it if you don't. I mean, it's, it's not like big spoilers, you know. It's that they're really minor, actually, if anything. And they don't. I mean, it's out of context too. We don't even know, uh, you know, what's going on there. But yeah. So, the last thing that we wanted to talk about in this video, and by we I mean me, um, and y'all, hopefully, uh, as I stated earlier, is the new PS5 info that we got. Um, and, you know, of course we're all excited. We got a pretty, we didn't get a release date, but we pretty much got a release date, you know, window at least. Very, it's a small window too, so, you know, you could probably kind of guess which day it's going to come out. Um, but so for the PS5, it's going to come out holiday 2020. I'm sure you guys have heard that. Um, I think it's necessary for all these kind of videos anyways, because what games are going to be remastered for? Probably The Last of Us 2. Actually, definitely Last of Us 2. They already said that. And Ghost of Tsushima is going to be on it as well. We still don't have a release date for the PlayStation 4 version of Ghost of Tsushima, but we know Last of Us 2 is coming out in February. I think it's February 20th or 22nd, 2020. Something like that. I don't remember it exactly. Um, but, so, the first thing, you know, that I want to talk about is remember now how in with video games we're going in this direction of immersion and how immersive can you make an environment how immersive can you make a character how immersive can you make the actions between the gamer and the character uh so i bring that up because playstation 5 is is making a lot of uh the hype for the controller itself is growing um it is it was big already but now you know it's, it's even bigger because now we have info on what we're going to get with it so with it, you know, the new PS5 controller is going to use a Type-C USB. I'm, I'm going to use my phone because I don't remember this off the top of my head. So it's going to use a Type-C USB. Uh, the PS5 controller is going to have haptic feedback. Uh, controller has now adaptive triggers. Okay, that's fire. And new speaker system on the controller. Better battery life. And it'll be heavier than the DualShock 4, which means it'll probably be a little bit bigger too, but it'll still be lighter and smaller than the Xbox controller. So, that's tough. Um, the reason why that's tough is because for the haptic feedback, it'll feel more immersive in the sense that, and this was straight from um, Cerny and uh, the people that are running the show at Sony and, you know, PlayStation and all that other good stuff. But... <laughs> Uh, the reason why is because apparently, you know, when you're playing two different games, you will get a totally different feel depending on what's going on in the game. So, like, you know how since the fifth generation of games, we've had just the controller just vibrates when anything happens. Like, if you're in a racing game, if you crash, it vibrates. If you tackle in football game, Madden, it vibrates. Um, things of that nature is going to be different. You'll have a different feel. Um, it'll... I guess, I'm not sure how they're going to do this, guys, but I guess they're going to try and make it so that you really do feel the difference. I don't know. The sensors that you must use for this are going to have to be very, um... Well, honestly, Sony's like, listen, we just put the, the specs in, and it's up to the game developers on how they're going to use it. <laughs> so, you know, that's really it. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work, how they're going to make it feel so different. I can kind of get an idea of how you can make it feel different when you're walking across smooth ter terrain versus rough terrain, but that's the only thing I can really kind of get from it. But the crashing and tackling, that's going to be interesting. Like, am I actually going to feel my guy basically wrapping his hands around a guy in Madden or, like, for a tackle? Or if I'm playing a racing game, am I going to feel the dents in the car after I crash? Like, you know, it's like, I don't know. But whatever it is, it's cool, and I'm excited for it. Um, but that's really what the haptic feedback is for. The resistance, though we were talking about the triggers, they can make the, depending on what's happening in the game, the, the resistance for the triggers will be a lot or a little. 
So, you know, in a story mode mission, or maybe you're trying to pry something open, the resistance will be a little harder. Maybe you feel it loosening up as the door loosens up that you're trying to wedge open, you know, something or a lock that you're trying to cut. Um, that's pretty cool. So that's what we got here. Um, I'm really excited for all of this Death Stranding, of course. Uh, we have, we're, we're, we're about a month out. We are a month out. So, exactly. So, that's going to be lit. Um, so, and the PlayStation 5 comes out 2020, holiday 2020. My guess is going to be the 19th or 20th, or maybe the week before that, uh, for in November, is my guess. Uh, we know it's coming out with a remaster, Last of Us 2. We know Ghost of Tsushima is going to be on it, because the... A CEO of Sony has already played these games. He's even played Death Stranding, 10 hours of it. Um, so he's played these games, so he knows what's going to be on it, what they're going to feel like so far. But, um, yeah, I'm excited, y'all. So, I, I'm, I mean, I'm going to catch y'all later. You know, I appreciate y'all watching this. I appreciate y'all watching this to the end. Again, thank you for the 50 subs. I know it's not a whole lot. You know, there's people with many more, but everything's a milestone, and y'all help me get there. So if y'all want to join the AGP family, you already know what you got to do. You just click that subscribe button. We're going to have all this Death Stranding news, more PS5 news. I'm going to drop another Ghost of Tsushima video because right now, that's the one game where I think we're all really like, where the hell is it? So, and I'm excited to kind of figure out. We haven't really got any new info, but we know a little bit about who Sucker. Sucker Punch is looking for certain people for certain positions, but I'll make a video about that anyways. But I'm going to catch y'all later. Thank you again, and I'm going to catch y'all on the flip side. Peace. I was counting change Yeah, hopping trains up in New York City No, I gotta thank God Cause if you won't with me Then I surely would've died You can throw the fork in me This my New Year's resolution, dog. No more pork in me Uh, I ain't no Muslim, no Karan Butler I'm a wizard if you doesn't know It's Young Simba, yeah, I'm ballin' to the buzzer blow You tryna kick the shit I kick, man You gon' stub your toe